So here's a novel idea. Tax the people with the most money to help people with the least. Wealthy people generally pay a far lower rate than everybody else, but they also generally don't want that to change. Until now. A group called the Patriotic Millionaires wants to hike taxes on themselves and other millionaires. They say it's only fair. A short time ago, Rich spoke with the head of that group, Morris Pearl. Well, simply put, when guys like you tend to go up to state capital, in this case Albany, you're trying to fight some form of regulations here to cut your taxes. Instead, you're telling them that you should be spending more or being taxed more. Why is that? Well, we think that the rich, the wealthy among us, should be taking more of the burden of paying our country's needs. We went to the um, federal government last November because we thought that this issue of this carried interest loophole where rich equity fund managers and money managers are paying lower tax rates than the people who actually work for a living was just egregious. It's the most outrageous poster child of an example of a tax loophole that's unfair. We didn't get very far with the federal government, so we went to the state government and some assembly members in the New York State Legislature are proposing a compact between several states, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, and Massachusetts, that these states would have additional taxes to make up for this loophole at the federal level. And if you could, Morris, let's stay with, I know this is much more than just uh, carried interest here, but if we could do this and try sure. and make it as 101 for the audience, the idea that somebody, deep pockets, goes to, let's say, a hedge fund and says, all right, Here's my pile, I want you to invest it. At least they have skin in the game, and they are at least engendering some risk. Who knows where the markets will go, sure. as we all know. But the idea that the person doing the investing with no skin in the game would still be paying the reduced tax rate on those incomes when, let's say, the secretary working at the same firm would still be paying the normal middle class tax rate uh, defies all logic, and it goes on every day. It just seems ridiculous to me. These guys who manage money, they say, well, we're in partnership with our investors and our, and since we earn a, earn a fee as part of that partnership, we as partners should pay income taxes at the preferential rate for long-term capital gains. Congress created these preferential rates to give people an incentive to invest money for the long term in America's industries, not as an incentive for people to become money managers and talk about investing money for the long term. So that's why we think it's just ridiculous that these investment advisors have preferential tax treatment. You know, even separating politics, Morris, I had an interesting conversation. Obviously, we saw the sad passing of Nancy Reagan uh, recently. And the return to Reagan, the deification of Reagan, remind people what people were paying on the top income tax brackets under Reagan compared to what they are now. I think a lot of people would be surprised. Oh, sure. There were rates as high as 70% not that long ago. And they were reduced greatly by then-President Reagan. On theory, that would help everyone through some theory of trickle-down economics. It's what George Bush called voodoo economics back in the day when he was running in the presidential primaries. But now it's just become accepted wisdom. Oh, raising taxes, that's evil, that's class warfare, that's bad for the rich. And our group got together to try to explain to people that it's not evil, it's that even wealthy business people need a robust middle class in our country to be able to pay for things. And we don't want the gross inequality that a small number of people seem to think is a good idea or the American way or something that's just not the case. Nobody enjoys paying taxes, Morris, but the, pr the premise is there's a difference between taxes that are confiscatory, like 9% when we had it under Eisenhower at one point, to arguing that we need a flat tax, right? Yeah. I mean, paying taxes at 39%, a lot of Americans are paying 39% of their income in taxes. And I don't think it's any reason that some of the wealthiest among us, one quarter of the Forbes billionaires at the top of the list are people who made their money managing other people's money, that some of the wealthiest people are paying tax at a much lower rate than typical middle-class Americans. And we don't think that's fair. Well, Morris, you came from the world um, of the financial sector, uh, from BlackRock, and you've heard some say, hey, time out. Guys, Wall Street profits were down last year. And Catherine Wilde, a friend of the program, uh, she said, uh, and she's the CEO of a group here who looks over um, the city's uh, 
fiscal future, if you will. She said politicians who are calling for even more regulation of the financial industry, including the mayor, need to keep in mind that the financial industry is responsible for about 40 percent of the local economy and directly contributes 20 percent of our tax revenues. New York can't continue to thrive if Wall Street withers. The implied threat here is, especially if you're talking about for folks in the money managers, we don't have to be in New York City to do this. You guys keep doing this and raise the rates on us. We'll go somewhere else. Well, sure. That's I, I read what she wrote. And one, that's why we're asking for, well, that's why the assembly people who introduced this are introduced a compact between several states, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. And secondly, people live in New York for a reason. New York is the greatest place in the world to live. Part of the reason that with this is the financial capital of the world is because of our robust regulation. It's not in spite of it. And thirdly, if you read on to what she, what she put in the press release in the next paragraph, it's that uh, Wall Street firms are having to hire more middle class people as compliance people and as lawyers to watch over all of these bankers that have been going astray lately. So the fact they're having to hire more middle class people, more hundred and two hundred thousand dollar a year people, less million dollar a year people, actually is not a bad thing. I don't think we have a shortage of multi-million dollar bankers and if we're and if the Wall Street firms are saying they're having to hire more middle class people, people who earn a few hundred thousand dollars a year, a lot more than middle class in most of America, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing for New York or for America. Interesting conversation. It's very curious what's going to happen yeah. uh, at the state level, especially in our neck of the woods yes. is the four states as well. Hey, Morris, I appreciate a couple again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great talking to you. Up next, our Hudson Valley headlines. Stay with us.